in this video, I'm going to prove this statement using the epsilon delta definition. So this seems intuitively true, but I'm going to recast this into the epsilon delta definition. And if we are able to do that, then we can say with confidence that this statement is indeed true. So for this statement, the epsilon delta definition that I would need to establish is that for all values of epsilon, so this symbol means for all, so for all values of epsilon larger than zero, there exists, so there's a symbol for that, so there exists, this symbol means there exists, a value delta larger than zero, such that if your values of x lie within a distance of delta away from one, then this implies that 2x plus 1 lies within a distance of epsilon away from the value 3. So this is the statement that I would have to establish in order to say with confidence that this statement is indeed true. So now let's focus on how we can establish this statement. So in order to begin, I'm going to start off with the statement x minus 1 is larger than 0 and smaller than delta. So this is really just this statement over here. And then I'm going to multiply both sides by 2. This will eventually allow me to establish the epsilon delta definition, as I'm about to demonstrate. And then I'm going to absorb this 2 inside the absolute value sign. And then for 2x minus 2, I can actually rewrite this as 2x plus 1 minus 3 is smaller than 2 delta. And then now I can choose delta to be equal to epsilon over 2. And you can see that if I do that, then 2 times delta will just become 2 times epsilon over 2, which is just equal to epsilon. So this statement over here immediately implies that 2x plus 1 minus 3 is going to be smaller than epsilon. So 2x plus 1 minus 3 is smaller than epsilon. And so essentially we're actually done over here. We've just shown that for no matter what value of epsilon that we choose, so note that we've imposed no restrictions on the value of epsilon over here. So no matter what value of epsilon that you choose, there will exist a delta larger than zero, such that if your x is at a distance of delta away from one, then it immediately implies that 2x plus one must be at a distance of epsilon away from three. And that really is essentially the epsilon delta definition. And you can see that we can establish the fact that there exists a delta larger than zero because we actually just found the delta. We found that if we set delta to be equal to epsilon over two, then this conditional statement immediately results. Immediately results that if x minus one is smaller than delta, then this term here is smaller than epsilon. And also one last thing I should mention is that you can see that we've chosen delta to be equal to epsilon over two, but this choice is by no means unique. So we only need to show that there exists a delta such that this conditional statement can be true. So it doesn't mean that there is only one delta that can allow this conditional statement to be true. So alternatively, I could have chosen something like delta is equal to epsilon over four, so an even smaller uh, delta. And you can see that this will only just cost us an extra step. So instead of writing everything like this, I'll just have two times epsilon over four, which is just equal to epsilon over two, which of course is smaller than epsilon. So you can see that it just cost me an extra step. So of course it's much more natural to choose epsilon over two. Uh, so this is why I chose epsilon over two to begin with. But just keep in mind that this choice is by no means unique. All we have to do is establish that there exists a delta such that uh, this conditional statement is true. And so this is how you can use the epsilon delta definition to confidently and rigorously establish uh, that this limit is indeed true.